So in this video, Omar is going to talk about why the robot brain is the key to winning the humanoid bot race. And we just learned from Morgan Stanley that Optimus is going to have a larger neural network than full self-driving does. So I'm going to talk about what that means. And that will move us into a conversation about Optimus security in a world where phone security is becoming a bigger and bigger concern for consumers. So that's what we're discussing today. And let's get into it. On the surface, it's a fun dance video. Behind the surface... It's a lot more than just a dance. What we're really seeing here, you know, to borrow a quote from James Dama last night, is really Optimus software going from V11 to V12. It's that type of jump in how they're training these systems. So if you think about how they were training Optimus before, they were really training it using motion capture. They had humans wearing suits, just like we train FSD by driving our cars and then putting that data into the training system and this model coming out, we were training Optimus by having it watch humans do certain tasks. But you can't really train it to walk or dance using motion capture because humans don't have the sense of balance of the robot. So new techniques were needed. What they're doing here, where they're actually training it using reinforcement learning and simulation, and bringing it zero shot to the real world, it's dramatically more scalable than having a bunch of guys in motion capture suits building a data set to train Optimus on. So this technique, zero, uh, you know, training using re reinforcement learning and simulation, and then moving it to the real world zero shot, this isn't just for dancing. The tweet from Milan Kovac that you just put up, he mentions that the same technique is going to be used for more robust walking. This is a whole new software paradigm for the AI brain that controls Optimus. So when we look at Boston Dynamics, they've made really impressive robot hardware, but the dance moves were pre-programmed in. They weren't generated using an AI system. And that really is the key to the future of robotics. We've known how to make robotics hardware for a long time. The key is that brain, that robot brain. And the company that creates that will win the humanoid robotics race. And of course, Tesla has a head start on a robot brain compared to other humanoid companies because they've been making robot brains for quite a few years now as they worked on full self-driving. However, as we learned yesterday on this new note from Morgan Stanley, who's a top 10 shareholder of Tesla, they said neural nets for Optimus are far larger than the ones for their cars. So what exactly does this mean and why are they larger? Well, for starters, it means the neural nets for Optimus are more complex and they have bigger computational requirements. And it has to be this way because Tesla's cars primarily use neural nets for tasks like object detection, you know, identifying pedestrians, vehicles, or traffic signs, while also lane keeping, path planning, and understanding the road environment. And while these tasks are complex, FSD is relatively constrained to a 2D or 2.5D environment. In large, what happens on the road is a lot more predictable than what happens off the road and in the home when there's lots of people around. In the home or in a store where Optimus will often find himself, you are now in a fully 3D dynamic, often unpredictable environment. Optimus is going to be walking on uneven terrain, manipulating objects and interacting with humans all at once. So the neural nets are going to need to process data from a wide variety of sensors across its entire body. It's not just a forward facing perspective anymore like the car. So the increased complexity of these tasks means Optimus neural nets needs more layers, more nodes, and more parameters to model the environment and make decisions. You can also think about it this way. A Tesla car has relatively few degrees of freedom. It can move forward, it could move backwards, or it can turn. There's a small set of control outputs, whereas with Optimus, you have 20 to 30 or more possibilities of how you can move. You have arms, legs, hands, fingers that can all move in different ways and each joint requires precise control. And the neural nets must coordinate all these movements simultaneously while maintaining balance and responding to external forces. So this demands a significantly larger neural network to process and act on all these variables in real time. And that's what makes this dancing video so important. Because if Optimus needs a larger neural network to function usefully, then that means it needs more data. And as Omar said, sim to real allows Tesla to get more data. It's a lot more scalable. Because a potential challenge of a larger neural network is that it's prone to overfitting. 
Optimus performs really, really well on things that it's well trained on, but poorly in new scenarios. And so Tesla will need diverse, high quality data to ensure Optimus can generalize to real world tasks. And if you watched James Dalma video talking about Optimus yesterday, we learned that Tesla is achieving this through sim to real. And another potential challenge in larger neural networks is that it might introduce latency in decision making, which could affect Optimus's responsiveness. But one thing I learned through Phil Beasel's article on the magic of full self-driving is that Tesla creates these sub layers, these expert sub neural networks that deactivate and activate. So they create sub neural networks that become an expert on one thing. Like Tesla Optimus probably has a neural network just for walking. And when Optimus is not needing to be walking, that sub network gets deactivated. And so Tesla only needs to keep the layers that are currently needed active. And by doing that, you reduce the computational load and avoid problems of latency. So while creating a smart and intelligent Optimus is going to be difficult, it's going to require more complexity than what full self driving did and full self driving has taken a very long time. But that being said, they began their journey on full self driving before all of this progress in AI has taken us to where we are today. And they've learned so much and they're getting all the compute. Sim to real seems to be working really well. I think they're going to do it. And so as Optimus moves into the American home, how does Tesla mollify the anxiety around security when Optimus is standing in your hallway, staring at you in the middle of the night while you go to the bathroom? Well, I mean, yeah. look, the point I'm trying to make is computer security is a function of the software, not where it's made. So, you know, your phone could be hacked and they could upload your dick pics. Your computer could be hacked and they could access your bank account. These are all, you know, concerns that we deal about beyond the sort of sci fi stuff of a robot takeover. And the way we prevent these things is, you know, through good computer security practices. So people talk about, oh, you know, what if you just hacked all the Teslas and made them drive into each other? There's no way to do that. There's no way to go over the Internet and tell the car to crash into something. All of the AI inference is happening on the device itself. So the way you prevent a robot apocalypse is really good design of the software and chips to be secure, to use cryptography, whether it's built in the United States or China is really sort of, um, you know, besides the point, maybe, you know, if, if there was some Chinese manufacturer that was shady and trying to slide some chip in there, or there was some Chinese robot, maybe that could be a concern. But cost, scale, I don't think this is necessarily an area where we want to be anti-competitive. And probably just like smartphones, I think China is going to dominate in manufacturing low cost robots. And that's really what we're getting into and why Tesla is so interesting, because this is leaving the stage of online demo videos. And what we're really working towards is actually mass producing thousands and millions of these. That's the difference between a Boston Dynamics demo and where we're going. So it's really going to be about scale. It's going to be about cost. It's about who can actually make a robot that someone can buy for a reasonable amount of money. So Tesla is, of course, very well equipped to achieve scale on Optimus. That's what they plan to do. And whenever I show Optimus to friends who don't really know a lot about Tesla, they're like, no, like that thing terrifies me. And of course, that's not my experience every time I show Optimus to somebody. But we've also seen concerns about data privacy and security grow exponentially over the last couple of years. And I'm going to show you guys the data in this consumer survey. Consumers plan to rev up their tech buying. In just one year, people who plan to increase their spending on tech rose by 19%. And this is likely due to the fact that consumers feel better able to afford tech devices than they did in 2023. And the adoption of generative AI like ChatGPT and Grok is growing. It has more than doubled in the past year. People who use it for projects and tasks has grown from 3% to 11% in just one year. And as people gain experience with generative AI, feelings of uncertainty and anxiety diminish, while excitement, fascination, and trust increase. And this is exactly what I expect to happen with the Optimus Tesla bot. Before people had used generative AI, hardly any of them trusted it. They start experimenting and the trust grows. Now they're using it and their trust is higher than ever. And the fear drops considerably. 
Consumers are more worried than ever that their digital activities could open them up to security incidents and to having their movements or behaviors tracked. In two years, people who worry that their digital activities put them at risk for security incidents grew 21%. 67% of parents said they worry that their children may be tracked through their devices. And it makes sense that the worries are growing because reported security incidents are also growing. Social media accounts being hacked grew 7% last year. Credit card hacks grew 5%. More people are falling for online scams. And also devices which were hacked also grew 4%. And 61% of consumers who were surveyed said that they worry about the tech companies they do business with. And here are the top concerns about using generative AI. It could be misused by bad actors. The results may be inaccurate. Data privacy and security when I use it. It might be biased. But going back to this chart again, the more people use it, the more they trust it, the less they fear it, the more excited they become. The same is going to happen with Optimus. But few consumers have high trust in their tech providers. Only 26% of consumers have very high trust in the makers of their tech devices. So how will Tesla get people to trust Optimus or even RoboTaxi? Well, tech providers earn more trust when they provide clearer data privacy and security policies and easier control over the user's data. One thing that Apple Apple does to build trust is they do on device processing and encryption. This means they process data locally on devices rather than in the cloud. So this means that like Face ID and Siri often process data on the device. This is similar to how FSD and Optimus use AI inference with onboard compute. Apple also ensures that data stored or transmitted like when you send an iMessage is encrypted, ensuring only the user and intended recipients can access it. Apple also collects less user data compared compared to their competitors. For example, Apple Maps doesn't tie data to user identities and Siri requests are anonymized by default. Their business model relies on hardware and services, not data-driven advertising. I think the same could be said for Tesla. And again, you just have to be transparent because Apple provides clear privacy labels on the App Store. And this definitely needs to be a focus for Tesla when you have cameras that are pointed at you in the vehicle and as Optimus moves into the domestic space. If Tesla ever does decide to do an app store for Optimus where external developers can help create useful skills for Optimus to learn, those apps are going to need to undergo strict reviews. And developers must adhere to privacy guidelines that are crystal clear. Apple enforces rules against unauthorized data sharing from developers and requires explicit user consent for tracking. So Tesla will definitely need to do the same. And in this GigaCast episode, the boys predicted Optimus will start above 100k for early adopters. And it is definitely a dream of mine to get my hands on one of these things early and just make a bunch of content they can take all the data they want from me i do not care i just want to start playing around with that thing and seeing what it can do and if there is going to be an app store guys we need to jump on that opportunity think about the guy who created angry birds we got to create the optimus angry birds something useful or something cool i don't know anyways that's all for today see you guys tomorrow